Hello everyone, my name is Kathy Beach and I'm coming to you from the Peterborough area in central Ontario. I am a retired elementary teacher with 45 years of teaching experience both outdoors and in. And I've been keeping myself busy these last few years as the national coordinator of the Kids Guide to Canada project. Since you have chosen this session to visit, my message is going to come as any great surprise to you. So I'm also going to try to bring you some activities and some ideas to help you make it happen. During COVID-19 and all of our school closures, the struggle to engage our students in learning is even greater than before. And in my experience, the key is very simple. Nothing surprising, nothing new. Our students need activities that are of interest, to them and that are of meaning. Meaning they have to see an exciting purpose in what they're going to do in order to go to all that trouble. When I was outdoors working with students every day, every day showed me that just being in the outdoors energized the kids and excited them about learning without their even knowing it. The day would fly by in a breeze. And why? Because the kids were engaged in relating to a world in which they actually lived. They were moving, talking, doing, discovering, building, creating, and sharing with their very own, very real audience. And most importantly, they were escaping the confines of the classroom, which has now become the confines of their home, surrounded by siblings and parents, pets, noises, smells, distractions, most of all, not by their friends. And so, during the times of emergency remote learning, which I'm calling EARL, we need to provide our students with learning tasks which engage their senses and their bodies, which take them into whatever part of their immediate world they're allowed to go into, which challenges them to do something meaningful with that learning, and which provides them with an opportunity to co-create with a friend or a classmate. With your permission, I'm gonna use the Kids Guide Project as an example. The Kids Guide to Canada Project arose out of a desire to provide students with an opportunity to share one of the topics on which they're already an expert, where they live. So the Kids Guide Project challenges students to explore their local community, meaning their immediate neighborhood, and then share that with students across Canada. The teacher signs the class up and chooses whatever activities appeal to their curriculum and their student interests. Students are generally challenged to go outside and explore specific aspects of their community at their own grade level. What kind of buildings do you see? What kind of homes do people live in? Are you in the middle of a city? Do you live out on the land? What is it like there? Are you surrounded by mountains or tall buildings? Do you live out on the prairies or out on the tundra? What kind of jobs do people work at in your community? What languages do people speak? Have people lived there for a long time? Or is your community very new? Who lived on these lands 500 years ago? Where are these people now? And then the students are asked to share one thing about their community that they're really interested in. And to do it, in whatever medium that appeals to them that the teacher will later publish on the Kids Guide to Canada map as a class. Make a painting of that lobster fishing boat down the way or the fire station down the street and tell us a little bit about what it's like there. Where does the food come from where you live? Do people grow their own food? Do you have a favorite store in your neighborhood? Perhaps you could interview a farmer or a fisherman or a government worker, or the post office clerk, from a social distance, of course. What role do the women in your community play? What kind of jobs do the women do? What kind of celebrations take place in your neighborhood every year? What kind of activities are there for kids? What kind of social or environmental problems exist in your community, and what has caused them? What kind of actions have already been taken to fix them? And how can young people do anything about them? I'd like to take you now to the Kids Guide itself and show you what we call special activities, which are free, 
and which are available to you and your students from around the world, if they're any help to you. They might give you a few ideas. They're in English and most of them are also in French. A few got lost in translation when we moved our website to a new server. So when you are looking for anything for the Kids Guide, you always go to AKGT Canada in whatever form. And for our website, it's akgtcanada.com. And to go to our special activities, you simply add special hyphen activities at the end. And when you go to our special activities page, you will find a list of all of the weekly activities we've provided over the years which might give you some ideas of the kinds of things that you might ask your students to do. Some kind of investigation and sharing of some element of their immediate community, meaning uh, go out and take a sound recording of what the birds sound like in spring. <clears throat> take photographs of what you can see from your bedroom window, um, not in any way identifying your house, but what can you see from your windows, especially for those kids who live in apartment buildings who don't have a great amount of outdoor area where they can go to do some exploring or going out in their backyards or going for a walk with their with an adult, their parent or whoever around the block or as they get older for a couple of blocks until they're getting to grade seven and eight and they can go for a number of blocks without their parents worrying about them. What kind of foods for dinner? What's the weather today? First snowfall, any kind of weather phenomenon. Going for a walk in your community and find pictures of things that are happening in spring. Just take a photograph of the plants. Find what kind of animals live in your community. And as we go down, you'll see in this list a fair number of student webcasts where we've had classes from across Canada create a live event where they've shared their community and the kinds of things that we're talking about. They were recorded, so you can watch those. But you could also think of creating a class video where the students do certain things. And, and um, I'm going to show you some examples of those kinds of things. If we go back to our basic homepage, if you click on the map, which is the actual kids guide, it will take you to another site that is hosted by Esri Canada. We've used Esri rather than Google. But to avoid long loading times, I've set up these pages ready to go. So I'm not going to actually click on the map. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you get there. First, we'll get rid of this informational sidebar. Then I can simply hold the shift key down and drag over an area I want to look at and I get a close up. And these are all the schools who have loaded information and artifacts about their local community. So if I go back to this, each of these dots is color coded by grade level. So if you were in grade four, you'd be looking for all the blue dots if you wanted to see what other grade four classes across Canada have shared. Starting at kindergarten, the simplest kinds of things that we've had people share are pieces of artwork about their local community. So the kids wouldn't be able to paint the same way as they can paint in your classroom, but they certainly could create a piece of art. We challenged all kinds of kindergarten classes to create a community quilt, and this was not what we had in mind. But I share it because it is a great example of having students create something where they're doing. They were creating in felt, little felt figures, and they were creating little pictures of buildings using felt and glue. Anything that gets the kids actually using their body and using their hands is going to be of enriched learning to them and more fun. This is the community quilt that we had actually suggested and what most classes did. This was done by a grade four class in Bonavista, Newfoundland. Each student created a piece of artwork about an element. Then the teacher stitched them together either in, in person or online. This is another quilt done by French immersion class in Victoria, a grade one French immersion class in Victoria, BC. And then we start to go up, and this is a book creator from grade two students in Westbrook, Edmonton. Please read if you're not from Edmonton. And it's clearly written by students. Hockey is awesome. I love hockey, but I broke my nose playing hockey. So lots of student writing with 
illustrations by the students and what a great memento for the students to have, perhaps writing a book about what it's like in their community during COVID-19 and then having the teacher put it together, which they can then have as a memento forever is a very, very cool idea. They know they're going to be doing something where there's an end product that's going to be of value and of meaning to them. Then they're going to be willing to do the work. The next next one is an alphabet book created by the grade three students of Montague, Ontario, which is near Smith Falls, Ontario, south of Ottawa. And obviously they have created an alphabet book showing all of the different things in their community which start with that letter. And I love this page and wish that we had a chance to talk with the student who did it because I'd like to know more about a dental car. What is a dental car? This is where giving a writing assignment even a short paragraph for younger students, longer descriptive paragraph, or even a story of older students to explain what a dental car is to all of the kids across Canada who have never heard of one before and haven't a clue how that really works. This is where sometimes the students may feel that there's nothing in their community they have to share. And if you've got students who are feeling that, you really need to show them this little video called Obvious to You, Amazing to Others by Derek Sivers, which really illustrates how even the most mundane little things that we never think of that seem so usual, because doesn't everybody have a dental car? No. This is a Padlet, a tool online where grade three class in um, Waterdown, Ontario, which is west of Toronto, worked with their grade one, two buddies and did little projects where the grade one, two buddies did some artwork and the grade three students did the writing. It's a great collaboration, but it's just a, a showing you an idea of the kinds of things that students could do and then post them all on one website where they have an audience of people who would look at their material and see what they've done and perhaps comment on it. If you've posted things on a blog, people could comment on it. But it's that authentic audience that makes it worth doing. <clears throat> Excuse me, worth doing. These photographs and write-ups were done by students in Squamish, BC, showing their creeks and taking photographs and then writing a few sentences to explain what it's like where they live. Talking about photographs and student work, these are clearly photographs coming up that I've chosen that show the kind of student work that isn't edited by teachers or fixed up by adults. And there's a certain element of accomplishment that comes from that when the kids know that you're not going to redo their work when it goes on the internet, that they need to make the quality as good as they can. These photographs were done by students in Schreiber, Northern Ontario. And I love this photograph of the cemetery with the hills in the background on Lake Superior. Clearly shows what it's like in their neighborhood. Or a somewhat out of focus picture when you're driving in dad's car across the prairies from Saskatchewan. Or simply some tennis courts waiting for spring with Lake Ontario in the background. This might not be the favorite photograph by adults, but it certainly is appealing to kids to see what it really is like and to just picture themselves getting in there, doing something active as soon as COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. Then again, these are the kinds of class videos that you could put together, not in a classroom setting, but you could have students deciding what they want to find out about and, and get a bit of information about and then share where their parents are taking the little video and then they're seamed together by the teacher. And this group of grade four or five students in Killaloo did something that most grade four or five students would not do, but they had a teacher who knew how to help the students place on a map the places in their small community. The students did write-ups about each one. We have the pro hardware store where people can get things that are inexpensive. Then we get to more advanced projects where these students of grade six in Bury, Quebec did projects on some element of their local community and then created a slide in this Google slide presentation and recorded their information in both English and French. And one of the slides caught my eye it's about dance. 
So clearly the students in this class chose all kinds of different elements of their community, including cultural and social, and even provided a video of dancing the gallop in Bury. And then you get to older grades where they're looking at some of the issues in their community, environmental problems, diversity, discrimination, or even a grade seven use of a Padlet for more in-depth history of Kingston, Ontario. I would just like to end by saying that if you're a K-8 teacher in Canada, we are going to be offering four weeks of ongoing support and help for teachers starting on May the 12th. And you can sign up for free on our website. We will be offering activities that are ready-made for you to use or revise from K to three, four to six, and seven and eight. And we'd be happy to have you join us. And if you're looking for any other information or you wanna just nose around and see what else you can find, you can find us through email, website, Twitter, Facebook. We're around, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much for listening. And I hope you've found some ideas of things that you and your kids can do between now and the end of June. Thanks a lot.